and we pick up with our 37th lesson from the epistle, the second epistle of John, where we're looking at verse 8, but that we receive a full reward. And what we've taken a little side note, and we're talking about the rewards, the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian. And for a recap, you go back and get the videos or the audio, whatever, how you listen. And lesson 36, we've talked about the gold, the silver, the precious stones, the wood, hay, and stubble. And we went into gold, silver, and precious stones as those things that will earn a reward. Now, number 37, we are going to look at the eternal loss. Now, Two things with our verse here. Gold, silver, precious stones is something that when it when it's put to the fire at the judgment seat of Christ, if it remains, gold, silver, precious stones, you're going to earn a reward. Wood, hay, and stubble burn. There is no reward. And we'll look at wood, hay, and stubble. We also need to see that that we receive a full reward. And I'm reminded here, let's see, Revelation 3.11, I have a note here. Revelation 3.7, 11, excuse me. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. So the Bible implies that you may earn gold, silver, precious stone. It implies that things that are worn in your life that you have done, you may lose the gold, the silver, the precious stones, or the gold, silver, precious stones like the stock market falls and turns into wood, hay, or stubble. Now we saw that it is tried by fire. 1 Corinthians 3.11 Let's go there real quick. 1 Corinthians 3.11 And for other foundation can no man lay then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, judgment day, judgment seat of Christ, because it shall be revealed by fire. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, fire is going to be put to your work. And the fire should try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built therein, he shall receive a reward. When the fire is tried out the works, the gold, silver, and precious stones that remain reward. If any man's work shall burn, shall be burned, wood, hay, and stubble burn. He shall suffer loss, no crown, no reward. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. In other words, these are your works as a Christian from, from the day that you were saved to the day of the rapture of your death. Your entire life is based upon six things, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. Three burn and three don't. Rewards will be based upon your works put into the fire, not your soul. Eternal loss, self, pleasure, world, lust, flesh, for Satan. That's the eternal losses. Not your soul. Nothing done for self will, will, will last. Nothing done for Satan will earn gold, silver, precious stone. Now wood. 
paper comes from wood money houses boats bonds wood wood burns that's a loss and that's exactly what what John writes keep your place in first Corinthians 3 he writes but that we receive a full reward and revelation loss taken hey pet food a labor for food drink dead grass a bundle of labor labor you, you know you you gather up the hay you cut it uh, it fits in there with barley and, and, and alcohol beverages it's those things not for God when you put hay to fire it lost it burns stubble worthlessness unfruitfulness it's not grain but yet yeah, it's a plant it's a poison kind of ivy it's a plant of no value it burns you'll suffer loss so it's that simple things will last and things will burn you gain or you lose Man's work that's burnt shall suffer loss. Look at verse number 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Your life will be judged upon that which will remain and that which will be lost. not your salvation it is what you have done for Jesus Christ what you have done for God what you have done for the holy what you've done for yourself for the unholy for for motive of world see motives will be judged here at the judgment seat of Christ Okay, so what are the rewards? Gold, silver, and precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble are your life's work. The building blocks of what you have done and what you did in your life as a Christian. From the day you got saved until you die or are raptured. John says in 2 John 8, Lose not those things, what we have wrought. And that we receive a full reward. And I believe your work is not finished even after death. That God is gracious. If your fruits continue to bear fruit after death, rewards are granted. I believe Paul is getting crowns for the books that he read that are in the Bible. For those that he witnessed and trained, that for them that went out and witnessed and trained, and them that witnessed and trained, and it comes. Listen, my salvation can go back to one of the eleven apostles. Now I don't know who. I'm not going to try to trace that family line. Like my salvation can be traced back to the eleven apostles, one of them, and get traced back to Jesus Christ. I believe that one of the 11 apostles, which is in my line of salvation, will earn a precious stone for my soul being saved, along with that man that witnessed to me the day that I got saved in April 90, 1987. As for those who had prayed for my soul to be saved. Maybe someone, maybe my, one of my grandparents died praying for my soul I don't know 
You think just because death will end the reward? God's gracious. He doesn't have to give us the eternal words of life to go to the lost and dying world. But he does. And missionaries in these videos and, and, and audios and things I have done for the Lord Jesus Christ, if I were to die today, as a result of what I have done for the fruits of the ministry, continue to those fruits of the ministry unto the, those fruits of the ministry. What if I were to die today and someone picks up one of my audio, picks up one of the things I have written for the Lord Jesus Christ and gets saved after I have died? It's not credited to me. Listen, we use the people use the Romans road. I use Romans chapter 10, 8, and 9 to witness to people. I use John's gospel to witness to people. And those fruits go back to John and Paul. I said, how many people have been saved by Paul's pen of Romans chapter 10? If thou shalt believe with our if thou shalt believe in thy heart that God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt uh, confess with thy mouth. And, uh, I'm misquoting the verse. I apologize, Lord. But with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confesses man unto salvation. Those that have believed on that, in Acts chapter 16, the writing of Luke, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you do with people who got saved on those verses? The Ethiopian eunuch was reading Isaiah. And Philip came along and showed him. Isaiah is going to get the fruit for what he wrote. And Philip for witnessing to the Ethiopian. And the Ethiopian going back to Ethiopia with the gospel. How long has Paul been in the grave? And yet Romans 10 is still working. How, many, how long has John been in the grave? And uh, John chapter 3 is still you. I believe he still, John and Paul, Timothy, and Titus, and I go on, are earning rewards for those who, who get saved and those that take the word and do what they're supposed to and do right. I believe there's fruits granted to the, to the writers. I guarantee that, uh, well, I'm not going to say I guarantee because I'm really not sure, but I... I God is gracious. If I were to witness to somebody today and they receive Christ as their Savior, somebody who planted a seed, someone who watered that seed, someone who prayed for that person, will get the rewards that I've got the rewards by this person being saved. This guy goes on and, and becomes great in the Lord. All those that have been behind him in prayer and witness in the Word are part of that guy's ministry. God's just so gracious. The rewards, I believe, keep going. Now, if you're a Demas, or we get into John chapter, Second John chapter nine and ten, I believe the rewards stop when you stop. Paul died faithfully. John died faithfully. Hopefully, I would die faithfully one day. If I were to quit right now serving the Lord, then I'd believe the rewards would quit. The judgment seat of Christ, what comes off from that? Rewards. When the gold, silver, and precious stone remain, there will be crowns as rewards. So you can take your gold, silver, and precious stone, you can exchange it for yourself and get wood, hay, and stubble and burn up. There's an exchange. You can serve yourself and get things that are going to burn up. Have you spent more on dog food, hay, than getting the gospel out? Silver and precious stone. And you can take gold, silver, and precious stone, and you can exchange it for crowns. Ashes from wood, hay, and stubble, there is no reward. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. If any man's work shall burn, shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. 
You're going to get that. You need to get that. Now, we're all going to suffer losses. None of us are 100%. I will have ashes. Paul will have ashes. John will have ashes. Peter will have ashes. Your preacher will have ashes. For all have sinned. The wages of sin is death. We will die with works of wood, hay, and stubble. For many Christians, their whole Christian life, from the day they were saved until their death or rapture, will be to set off the heavenly smoke detectors and have only a pile of ash left over and read the story of Lot. As far as you read with the story of Lot, the only thing he had in that cave in the end of his life was two of his daughters. That was it. He lost all. Lot pitches, and the Bible says he was just. Lot pitches a cardinal worldly Christian that loses it all in what? Fire. All his stuff was placed into the fire. And the only thing that came out as far as Lot himself was his soul. That was it. And there will be Christians in tears because tears are not wiped away to Revelation 21. Who will be rushing around those ashes looking for something, a gold dust. A little tiny gem and they won't find it they have given their all to the world and to Satan and they will not wear a crown in heaven Christian if you're not busy for the Lord Jesus Christ you need to get busy right now we're getting closer and closer to the Lord's return every time that clock goes an hour. We are an hour quicker to the Lord Jesus Christ appearing. And remember, if you go back to, to lesson number 36 and you pick up, you don't, the Bible does not tell you to be successful. It just tells you to go. You just got to try. God gives you a reward for effort. You can't go out and say right now, if I pass out gospel track, no one gets saved. I don't I don't get none. That's not true. You go out there with the right heart to pass out gospel tracks, you're gonna get silver. And if you've done it just for Jesus Christ, you got gold. And if God's mercy and grace is to someone who gets saved, you got precious stone. You got all three. But you do it for yourself, you got wood, hay, or silver, and that just burns up. Don't look for nothing. And don't look for nothing as a crown for eternity in New Jerusalem. What is left from the fire? Now let's read the verses, verse 14 and 15, 1 Corinthians 3. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Counter. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Jesus Christ, if anything is left found when the fire is put, gold, silver, precious stone, you're going to get that in your head. You're going to, repetition will get you to gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. You're going to get that. By the time we're done with this study, you're going to get gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble. Jesus Christ will reward them that done right with a crown. And there are five of them. Now, Burger King can give you a crown, which is just cardboard. What's cardboard come from? Burn. That's why they're flame boiled, I guess. I love Burger King. Well, that's just a paper crown. I've seen 
teenagers wearing them just, you know, to be foolish and stupid. And Burger King managers will not put that crown upon your head. No manager of a Burger King will step out of his office and say, Attention all patrons of this store, I like to crown this person with a Burger King crown. It's not going to happen. Maybe once in a while. I shouldn't say it's not going to happen, but... I want you to meditate on something. The Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who went to Calvary's cross, who told Thomas, Go ahead, reach and put your fingers in the nail prints of my hand. Reach in thither and, and thrust your hand into my side. What are these wounds? They were in the house of my friends. Not quoting it completely. Jesus Christ has in his body the marks of Isaiah 53 from my sins still and I believe with them nail pierced hands Zechariah 13 6 will reach over and place the crown that you have earned by him telling you what to do on your head and say well done Is the world worth losing? Is your flesh so great that you don't want them nail pierced hands to put a holy eternal crown that is pure upon your head, your new body? That when I suppose when the, when the elders cast their crowns at the Lord Jesus Christ and the throne of God that we will too if you have a crown wear a crown wear a crown wear a bright and shiny crown Jesus Christ does not have to do that he done all the work for us. God Almighty, Jesus Christ, is right with the Jehovah Witness. I'm going to say that because this is what this book is about. This misery, rot, and sinner soul that I am today, saved by grace. Doing what God told me to do, what should be expected. Not only he had the had the nail prints in his hand, laid his hands out for my sin. It's gonna put a crown if I'm eligible for one upon my head. Whereas you think yourself so important, the world is so good, that you tell Jesus, the hell with your crowns, the hell with your rewards, I am much better than that. Me, myself, and I in the world are more important than your crowns, and your gold, and your silver, and your precious stones. The word hey and struggle, I am content. I am so happy to have that and have the world pat me on the back. It's not what you're going to think in eternity. When you have no crown and you're standing there before all the Christians, all the angels, before God, before Jesus Christ, and you have nothing for him to give to you. That is a loss. Imagine Abraham walking up the lot. I, mean, I know it didn't happen. Maybe that, I don't know. Lot, where's all your stuff? Burnt up. Gone. Who's the grandchildren? 
Well, they're my grandchildren. They're also my children. Go read the story. Doesn't the groom place the gold ring upon the bride's finger? Where do you think you got that from? The groom placing upon his bride her earned crown. You don't get a crown if you don't earn it. There's no welfare in eternity. You didn't earn it, you don't get it. Plain and simple. Usually gold, mine's silver. I can't wear gold. But it's either gold or silver, isn't it? Now forget the modern world. They probably have purple and green and all that kind of stuff. But traditionally, they're usually gold or silver. Does that sound familiar? And doesn't the bride usually get a a, a stone? Well, look at that. Well, looky, looky, looky. A husband and wife will give each other gold or silver and usually a precious stone. Or maybe it's an imitation precious stone. The effort's there, isn't it? Wait till your Savior places an eternal crown upon your head. An everlasting reward. But you need to remember something. Let's read this again real quick before we go back to John. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall so, he shall receive a reward. <coughs> okay. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. One more time, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Let's try it together. You say it with me. If any man's work abide with no, if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Let's do it good now. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now let's go back to John. Second John. Verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, work, but that we receive a full what? Run that back to First Corinthians chapter three. Do you know you could get you could have right now gold, silver, precious stones, and do you know that you could lose them? And we're gonna look at one of those ways in nine, ten, and eleven. Don't think just because you got the, the rewards right now. Oh, they're, they're not eternal right now. They only are eternal when Jesus Christ places them on your head. Up to your death or the rapture, you can lose them. Let's go back to Revelation 3.11. Do you know somebody who's a Christian who's not serving the Lord today? I'm going to tell you why I call them losers. We just read it. I'll read you another place. Revelation 3.11. Behold, I come quickly. Now this is Jesus speaking. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Back to 2 John. You know a Christian can be a loser? You, listening to this video, may be a loser or you may be heading on a path of being a loser
I used to read my Bible, loser. It's out of the Bible. I used to witness, loser. I used to pray, loser. I used to go to church, loser. Don't think you had those crowns that you that you earned. You may have lost them. You may have a, a, a safe full of all the board, uh, of the gold, silver, and precious stone, but you may have lost it all or some. Don't lose any. He says, but that we receive a full reward. Get all that we earned. Now, let's recap. A couple more things and we'll be done. Gold is done for Jesus Christ. Silver is witnessing to others. Precious stone, those who get saved. It's a prayer life. It's working. It's reading your Bible. It's teaching others. It's gaining others. It's encouraging others. There is so much in this gold, silver, and precious stone. So much. Now, let me show you something. Next time, Lord willing, we're going to look at the crown. But let me show you something about the, about the rewards after the fire at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? You love the Lord Jesus Christ, you do things for him, gold. Plain and simple. That's for you. Vast amount of things. Money, time, effort, service, whatever it is. You know, driving a van to go pick up people or your car to go pick up you're doing it for Jesus. That's gold. Cool. You give a cashier a gospel trap. You want her to get saved. You're concerned about her soul, for his soul. That's silver. You pay money for a missionary overseas and people got saved. One, two people got saved. That's precious stone. That cashier later on, somebody witnessed her and gets saved. That's precious stone. Now watch this. Watch this. Okay. I'm going to do it in reverse. The Lord has allowed someone to receive the Lord Jesus Christ using me as the instrument. That's precious stone. Early that day, I passed out a gospel tract to some people. That day. That's silver. And one day, the Lord allowed me to earn precious silver, precious stone and silver. Maybe that day, I was, with, I was passing out gospel tracts, and somebody who had passed out a gospel tract two years ago got saved. That's precious stone. Now, witnessing for Jesus alone. And people getting saved for Jesus alone, what's that? That's gold. I'm praying for a group of men that are going to go out to the to the nursing home this afternoon. And that, I'm not I'm saying. And I'm praying in the name and the care of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. A soul gets saved. I just got gold, silver, and precious stone in one shot. How hard was that? See, I can love the Lord Jesus Christ and get a crown. A gold. I can go out and witness to others and do it for a notch on a belt. I lost. That was for myself. That was for numbers. That's for accountability. I lose. Someone gets saved because of that. Now, that's kind of iffy, but that's a reward if it wasn't for the flesh. So you see, what I can do in Christ and all, I can get all three. But what I do in the flesh, it's scattered, it's mixed up. Except for one crown, we're not going to get into it today. You know, if you earn one crown, there's five crowns, but there's one crown for a specific group of people. We'll get into that. But you know, out of four crowns are left over. If you earn one crown, you earn two, you earn three, you earn four, 
you may even earn the fifth one. You know, if I disrespect my parents, I don't love God. So I broke honor thy father and mother, and I broke the first commandment. You know, if you break one commandment, you'll break two, you'll break three, you'll break four, and eventually you'll break all ten. With one commandment broken, well, adultery, read the Bible, adultery is also idolatry. You see, in God's formula of things in life, If I do things correct, I can owe, I can earn gold, silver, and precious stone in one in one being. I can earn the crowns, and yet, on the other hand, I can destroy all for one thing, or let me say three things. Three things are one. I can destroy the work, the eternal rewards by me, myself, and I. That's one thing. See, in me, myself, and I, there's no room for God. There's no room for others. And if I'm truly going to follow the commandments of Christ to love my neighbor as myself, I'm saved. I'm going to love that guy enough who's not saved. I'm going to love the Christian more to, to help him, try to help him out. And you can ask my wife. There have been Christians I, I've prayed and tried to help out and to the point where their church or they, or they themselves say, no, I don't want it. And you're gone. You're not on my wagon. See, you're on my wagon for the Lord Jesus Christ if you want to do right and serve. That's my wagon. And every once in a while, I've got to get out of that wagon and fix a wheel or fix something that breaks because I'm a sinner. I want my wagon to reach the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe as broken as it is before Jesus Christ. And I don't want anybody on my wagon who doesn't love the Lord Jesus Christ and just drag them through. Because there'll be an extra weight, extra burden that I need not to have. If you want to learn the Bible, you want to do right, come on aboard. We'll open up a Bible. And we'll study and we'll read and we'll pray to the Lord God that died for our sin, who created all. And let us help each other earn the rewards that God wants to give us and not... Because look at Revelation chapter 3 again. What does it say? Verse number 11. Behold, I come quickly. Amen. You want the Lord to come quickly? That's going to be a crown. Hold that fast which thou hast. Okay, ready? Comma. That no man take thy crown. John, who is the writer to Second John, who told us to, to earn the full reward, the same writer in Revelation through the Lord Jesus Christ, John pens and said, Man. Is able to take away your reward. Look at that. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ, written by John, who also read. Let's go back to Second John, verse eight. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And you turn over a couple books later in a chapter or two, and it says. Man is one of those things that can take away your reward. You better be careful who you associate with yourself. 
Have you ever sinned foolishly being with a group of Christians? Have you ever had improper music being around Christians? Have you ever done anything that, that it's a sin being around Christians? And being with that company, you may have lost and not attain a full report. How much you lost, I have no idea. But John tells us, receive a full reward. And we haven't finished this book, but we're going to see religion pop up here. But we just saw Revelation, man. So we'll pick up Lord willing next week. We will exchange the gold, silver, and precious stones. We will exchange them for crowns. Glory to God.